Thank you. That was a beautiful Rajasthan AV giving us a glimpse of Rajasthan. We are delighted to introduce Voices in My Head, presented by Rajasthan Tourism. And it's a pleasure to invite Honorable Minister of Tourism, Government of Rajasthan, Sri Vishwendra Singh Ji, to introduce the session. Excellencies, distinguished guests, I would like to introduce my nephew. It gives me great pleasure to be unveiling the book Voices of In My Head, authored by Yami Radhar, who comes from a family of renowned literatures and industrialists. And he is the grandson of the raised Ramakrishna Dalmia. His debut book, Voices in My Head, is a chronicle of his journey from a childhood asthmatic to one free of all his ailments today. It deals with the greatest challenge the world faces in the 21st century, which is, a phys which is physical and mental well-being. Yami did his schooling from St. Columbus School in New Delhi and graduated in international business from Regents Business School in London. He soon realized that doing business was not his calling. He gravitized gravitated to writing in order to make people aware of the need to discover and achieve wellness in their own lives. He is ready with his next book in the same genre that should soon be available for us. I wish him all the success in his venture and hope to see him achieve his lofty goals of physical and mental wellness in the days ahead. And this is my second session. So I came in the morning and I would like to invite my sister, Mrs. Neerima Alman. Nirmaji Dalmi Adhar, who is Yamir's mother and an author herself. And one advice to you it's Uruva because I'll be going again back into the assemblies in session. Try and stay away from politics. Thank you, Minister Saab. And let me also say that she's also the publisher of the book, ladies and gentlemen. This is indeed a proud moment for me today. In 2016, I was here, sorry, 2017 of January, I was here with my book on Kasturba as one of the speakers. But it gives me much more pleasure and pride to be here as a co-author and the mother of this brilliant young writer, even if I say so myself. His book, Voices in My Head, touches on the most critical need of the hour. It deals on mental and physical wellness, which is his goal. And he also has a podcast, which is the same title as his book called Voices in My Head. The book has shown me glaring lapses in my parenting, which I accept with grace and humility. And I thank my precious younger brother, Vishwendraji, for giving Yamir this spectacular opportunity, the break for a debut writer at JLF, and also JLF for organizing this spectacular event. Thank you all. Thank you, Nilima Ji. Thank you, uh, Minister Saab. Now may I please ask the venue manager, Komal, to come and introduce the panel and the, uh, the session details. Let me also request Minister Saab to release the book. Nilimaji, Nilimaji as well and Sanjoy Roy, producer of the festival.
Nelima Ji just wanted to make a correction that she isn't the co-author of the book, but she's certainly the co-producer of Yamir, who authored the book. Thank you. Um, Komal, over to you for the introductions. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Varun. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a very warm welcome to each one of you to the 15th edition of Jaipur Literature Fest Festival, protected by the tall Banega, Swast India at the front lawns. Namaskar. Yami Radar's book, Voices in My Head, captures this challenging journey that deals with emotional and physical obstacles in his daily life. In conversation with Punita Roy, Adhar discusses ways to move beyond daily struggles and live a fulfilling life. Yamir Adhar is an author, poet, and wellness motivator. His debut book, Voices in My Head, which achieved bestseller status, chronicles his journey from an asthmatic childhood to one free from all his ailments today. He also hosts an ongoing wellness podcast titled Voices in My Head, which has been watched and heard by thousands of people across the globe. Please welcome Punita Roy. Punita Roy is a media professional who is passionate about integrating young people from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds and channeling their energies to work on issues of social justice. Currently, she's deeply invested in using the arts to build emotional intelligence and self-esteem amongst children in conflict with law. Leaving it to you, Yami and Punita. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you, Yamin, thank for you. coming up with this book which is, I think, a very important book in these times. Uh, when this book was given to me, you know, I was really intrigued, one, by the title, which is what I'm going to start with. But just to let you know that the book has been written, I mean, with a lot of humility. Yamin describes himself as an average human being with average intellect and no, you know, significant achievements. And honestly, that got me hooked in the sense of, He's not professing to be this, the guru. We have enough of those, you know, in our society today, but actually sharing his own journey of self-discovery and moving from a childhood of, you know, he speaks about from obesity, uh, battling asthma, um, I think mood disorders, et cetera, et cetera, stuff that a lot of young people today are going through. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, I mean, we went through that when we were your age we didn't have the words for it and we were just told to get on with it you know but um fascinating fascinating to actually and what is so amazing is how transparent you've been yamin you've just laid out your um uh, yamir sorry i'm sorry i have a friend called yamin hazarika anyway so yamir has laid out his vulnerabilities without worrying about you know us judging him which is amazing so yamir if we start straight off you know, what intrigued me about your title to start off with voices in my head, I was actually wondering that, are you hearing, you know, is it some bit of possession or what? So, and now I understand you have a podcast also. Yes. So would you like to just explain to us? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, voices in my head came about in a way that all of us, our thoughts, Yeah. how do we think when we think? Right now, I'm thinking about what I'm about to say. It's coming as kind of a voice in my head. Right. So it's not necessarily somebody who's suffering from auditory hallucinations right. or uh, some sort of a mental health issue from that aspect. But having said that, most of us who end up having any sort of problems, depression, anxiety, any sort of mental health disorders, even physical ailments, they all mostly start in the mind. You start mm. thinking that, oh, I'm... You know, I've got a bit of a cold. I'm feeling something's happening. It's a thought. It's a voice in our head. And there were so many voices in my head. And I know there's so many voices in everybody else's head. So I wanted to call it voices in my head because I'm, and that's exactly what this book is. It's, it's a collection of the voices in my head. It's a journal. It's a story. It's a, you know, there are, there are tales of, of love and hate and 
and uh, a lot of uh, and loneliness and loneliness mental health issues and most of all the message from voices in my head somebody asked me the other day what what is the takeaway if i'm uh, from your book i said yeah. i wanted to propagate that there is a happily ever after so we've been led to believe that the happily ever after always comes oh, at the end of a fairy, fairy tale. tale yeah yeah and there's no reason i think we have the tools the the tools are available for most of us right i would say majority of us to to create the happily ever after for ourselves right but it's been quite a roller coaster ride absolutely yeah? your childhood your youth and um i was intrigued because in the beginning few chapters you know you've got these what i um the wonderful lines but at times when you read them in self help bo books mm. they come across as platitudes but you because you've read them again and again mm. you know but when you dive deeper you realize that they're coming from your experience you know mm. where you say that speaking of thoughts the mm. voices that you can choose your thoughts i mean your thoughts are what will determine your external reality right but when your external reality is harsh how do you make that switch how did you make that switch so it's been uh, quite a difficult journey for myself personally i think uh, the ch the childhood was tough because of the schooling and because of my health issues and uh, people don't realize of how much of that school going years actually shape the rest of your life absolutely a lot of people that i'm fortunate enough to be able to help now most of their issues is some incident something which you may consider to be insignificant that happened in school to them right that has continuing to impact their life till now and for me it was um, a lot of uh, self discovery a lot of the writing that uh, especially the poetry which is in the book has surfaced in my you know when i was at my lowest point hmm. and it's through hit and trial through discovery of a lot of things and finally and maybe we can talk about that a little later i've yeah. i've, been, i've i've tried to give solutions in the end rather than and concrete solutions yeah, something that you can has, yes. do right now right you know this is not something that will take you 10 years to do there there are tools in this or protocols or you can call it something like that which you can immediately incorporate in your life and you will start feeling better immediately right versus right. um something that is a long drawn process right. and i don't want people to have to go through what i went through obviously i think everybody who's in the self help space yeah. wants uh, many people to maybe take a little bit of a shortcut and not have to suffer as much as they did yeah true i mean you're really young and uh, you know when you speak about the school going years uh one thing that a lot of us who are in the mental health space talk about frequently is healing the inner child mm -hmm. you know and we may be 60 70 80 but if our inner child is still in trauma it comes out in really ugly ways you know and it poisons and makes you bitter etc so but your inner child i mean um one thing that really came across very strongly in the book was the affirmations that you speak about right and right in the beginning you say that i'm strong i'm happy i'm healthy how did you get to that point so these three affirmations i i think affirmations also have to be built around what is important to that person hmm. so for me my happiness my health and strength were the three most important aspects nothing else mattered to me and it's also because perhaps i was deprived of those three things for a very long time right so for me it's if i'm I wake up in the morning and if that on that day i can ensure that i'm happy i feel energetic i'm strong and i'm healthy hmm. this is a it's a perfect world for me personally right. for right. someone else it may be some sort of career goals yeah for another person it may be sitting on the stage with you yeah. Yeah. and i'm sure that was subconsciously a, a goal of mine too <laughs> um but affirmations a lot of people speak of affirmations and of course the book the secret and the movie my only issue with that particular glorification of affirmations is that it's been made very material hmm. so i want a ferrari or how do you manifest a house how do you manifest that dream job and i'm not saying that you can't do that you can do that through affirmations yeah. but why are you why do you want the ferrari to be happy hmm 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 and because today it could bring you happiness yes. but a month later it loses its shine exactly so i read something somewhere which i've mentioned in the book is that happiness is a decision 
it's not an effect right so you if you just choose to be happy today and i know that's easier said than done and i don't want to downplay any bit any of the you know mental health issues that people have you need mm. to choose happiness is a choice yes. you need to choose to be happy absolutely versus uh, something else and just to clarify on the or to elaborate on the affirmations uh, i think one thing that's also missing in in uh, the way people propagate affirmations and, and i learned this from uh, someone called dandapani he's a sri lankan monk is that you have to speak of the affirmations in the present so hmm. it's i am happy not that i'm trying to be happy i'm trying no. to be happy yeah. i am not unhappy ha. so it has to be present it has to be now and positive if you say i am not going to be unhappy the brain doesn't recognize not hmm. so that's the first important so aspect so the brain would say i am unhappy i am unhappy or yeah. just doesn't understand the difference so right. present moment now second is the visualization is very important and strong so you have to visualize uh an example that dandapani gave was if he's talking about if you say apple today now are you talking about the apple fruit are you talking about apple computers are you thinking about steve jobs are you thinking about your pet whose name is apple right so you have to visualize what that happiness means to you so if right. i am happy then you need to close your eyes or maybe not close your eyes but think about what does happiness mean to you right. is it um sitting in a art gallery and observing some beautiful painting is it sitting on a beach is it being in your office amongst your you Colleagues, know if you're an entrepreneur yeah. your yeah. your colleague your loved ones so you have to visualize that it's very important and you have to really feel it that's the third aspect other than visualization is in that moment force yourself trick your brain and body and you can do it by feeling that happiness in your system yeah. in your mind yeah. and body yeah. otherwise it's an empty the empty words i am happy means nothing yeah. unless you visualize unless you feel and that's and the way you have to practice believe it believe absolutely it, right? absolutely so things come true once you believe in them that's the energy yes okay yes. okay so yamir you know um mental health especially now after the pandemic is is a huge huge issue amongst well i mean not just young people but we're focusing more on the youth today because i think you know the older people they can rationalize whatever i know it's the young people who are really a cause of concern and uh, the latest addiction of social media is not quite helping right so i want you to touch upon one social media mm -hmm. and the other is finding your purpose in life because i feel they interconnected you can get lost sure. in the addiction of checking instas and everybody looking happier than you are etc cetera, etc cetera, and thinking that that's where you need to be at in that picture right so you have touched upon social media yes would you want to read your poem first or uh, do that later i can okay. i can read that or maybe then that will give away my take on it but i okay, okay. so right. i i i wrote a poem before um the social media there's a chapter called digital dope so here it goes the mirror never lies but it denies many the right to live with themselves to believe someone when they say you are beautiful to wear whatever you think looks good without having been judged by yourself in truth the mirror lies what it shows you is not who you really are you are so much more than the reflection staring back at you judging you hating you abusing you using you mirrors break and shatter both themselves and those who matter okay wonderful so, yeah uh this is just the kind of poetry that is sometimes i voices in my head which i've just let out and the book incidentally has a lot of poems so interesting starting yeah. with the last right so uh, yes. yes so the the poet i'll i'll just come back to social media since you touched upon yes. the the poetry um, initially when i was uh, you know looking around for publishers trying to do that and i assumed uh, it's going to be a breeze since you know my mother is published many books my grandmother was 40 plus books but uh, it it's it wasn't uh, as easy, easy clearly yes. it's not that easy so uh, the one of the the issues was that the publishers or a typical person looking at this was that there are two books in here and you're wasting two books you're wasting a, there's a separate book of poetry and there's a separate book of your life so why do you want to combine that and i was adamant to keep it as it is as every author is stuck to there yeah, yeah. but th but there's a very specific reason is that someone like me who had no experience perhaps writing poetry maybe you can say it's a little bit genetic out of nowhere i started writing this very very uh, dark deep some of it is very depressing and 
even what I just read out to you, this came out of nowhere. I'd never written before. So it was very important for me to showcase how someone like myself, who's gone through a mental health issue or who's been very depressed and anxious that this creative aspect of me was brought out through this depression. And I wanted to showcase that poetry and also really make you feel for a second. If you've never, if you don't know anyone who's depressed or had a mental health issue, when you read that, you'll realize that, oh my God, this person se seems to be really, uh, you yeah, know, you're going kind of through trapped in your darkness. Yes. Right? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So that's just my two bits on the, on the poetry you were mentioning about youth so, hmm. and uh, social media. So I think one of the, the biggest threats or and, and challenges now, especially to millennials. Okay. We are a little bit affected. I'm a millennial, but I'm so worried about the next generation, Gen Z and what's going to come after that is because they don't know a world without digital devices anymore. You're handed a digital device. I know two, three, four year olds who have an iPad and a, yeah. and an iPhone. And there is a reason, and this is well documented now, Steve jobs, Bill Gates, all these people who created this tech world we're living in never allowed their kids to access. They never allowed access to these devices for a very long time till their kids were, I, I guess, as long Teenagers, as they could right? prevent it yeah. because they had the data when you're operating at that level, they knew the potential risk of this, this, this powerful tool yeah. in the How hand of someone, someone come. young. Yeah. yeah. Similarly, uh, again, this is Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook knew that their algorithm without it being, I, I don't think it was designed to do that, but just the way it works was propagating people to get locked in echo chambers, only give them the content that was going viral. So more hate speech, more, uh, um, things that were making people depressed and anxious. Yeah, so, so that became their appetite, right? that became yeah, their appetite. Yeah, yeah. And now it's even mandatory, unfortunately in school. So in my, if in my son's school, if soon it's mandatory for everybody to study on an iPad or do X app on, I mean, how do you avoid that? Do you really want to, it's, it's a whole system that you'll have to take on. And having said that, if you, if you look at it, it's also difficult to not do that because you also want them to move with the times. You also want them to be up to date. You want the children to have the latest information, the, the best technology. So there is a huge, uh, it's, it's a very difficult problem to solve. Hmm. And there is a beautiful movie uh, documentary called the social dilemma hmm. on Netflix. So you yeah. must see that if you haven't seen that, it really, it reveals how difficult this space is and how much we don't realize how much data these companies have on us. And okay, if somebody has my data, no problem, but what that data can be used, they can literally use that data to manipulate me, to vote for who they want or whoever is the highest bidder on the ad spend right. to buy the products that they want me to buy to, uh, they can control you to so a very scary them. extent. Right. And you can imagine young minds, yeah. not fully developed, busy parents. It's, it's very easy to hand your child a device for that five minutes of peace. And, and I also very rarely, but sometimes have to do that. You want peace of quiet, you want a flight with your kid. Here's the iPad. Yeah. Don't, don't trouble me for the next half an hour or one hour. Yeah. But yeah. we don't know the damage it's creating and the addiction they are designed. So uh, all the top companies, all the top apps that you use, uh, candy crush is a very famous game. All these apps that you think you use the, one of the top positions, the engineers are people from the gambling industry. They have been put there to make it because they know how to get people addicted. Right. So they, you have the best minds in the world trying to create things to make sure that you don't stop touching that device or keep opening Instagram and that little like, or that little heart right. that pops right. up, it gives you a dopamine hit. You can't compete with that. None of us can. So it's a very difficult situation. Yeah. No, and the world is getting a more difficult place to navigate through. There's so many things blowing up around us right now. How are we going to, you know, uh, what I don't want to use the word train, but inspire young minds to navigate through this. You know, I spoke about the purpose. What's my goal going to be? So again, I think that's a very challenging question to answer. Before that, what I would like to do, and I keep thinking about the examples of my own uh, children of how I would like to bring them up is, how do we build resilience in people, especially who come from a privileged background like myself? Yes, it is exactly. so difficult. And 
you never look at you know it's that poor little rich kid story yeah. it's that how do you build that resilience yes and that too i feel you have to there, there is a concept in the book that i've written about called hormesis is about stressing your body in a controlled manner so it becomes little stronger so just the way you go to the gym and you lift weights because it breaks down the muscle and then when your muscle is repairing itself it comes back a little bit stronger right so i've provided tools like for example uh, i know and, and this may not sound uh, uh, very useful but taking a cold shower every morning right now yeah tell us about the so when i chanced upon this the only person he calls his guru yeah is a german who's called the ice man yeah wim hof and there's an amazing wim hof method mm. so you may tell us about so, the whole method so he's yeah. a dutch uh, sorry he's not german he's, he's dutch, dutch? he's a dutch guy called uh, wim hof and he is my guru so he is who set me on this journey of wellness i discovered him about 5 years ago and he propagates something called the wim hof method which is a breathing technique uh, and after the breathing technique there is some cold exposure involved so either in a cold shower or you sit in a ice shower or ice bath or you do something like that and this man i think single handedly has added value and saved the lives of millions of people around the world he has millions of followers it's uh, he's not selling any uh, patanjali type related products he's not it's not any of that and and what's unfortunate is i was discussing it's not that i am against any body propagating any method what a person like a baba ramdev may be propagating maybe a 5000 year old practice what we're doing but because it's been given a tint it's been given a tint of a brand and it's been given a tint of a particular particular political alliance it may not benefit half of india's population who may feel that this is against our religion to do this yeah and the intent is profit making finally it comes back to that right yes yeah. of course yeah. intent uh is uh, is profit making yeah. so uh so coming back to wim hof it's it's a breathing technique i've mentioned that in the book if all you take away from this book if and when you read it if all that you take away from this book is the wim hof method i would think that you know we have won many many battles yeah. and yeah. we we've done the right thing because and why because the first time you do it and i and i envy people who get to do it for the first time because the feeling that you get when you do this breathing method properly for the first time is something very difficult to describe i've put a lot of people onto it and it is from all kinds of uh, it's like a trip you're on a trip of uh, some sort of substance and you've just done that by a breathing technique you have reached a, a higher level and what it actually does is and there's enough scientific uh, study on the method it changes the brain and body chemistry right then so it makes the blood more alkaline it releases the right hormones for which a person maybe who's suffering from a mental health illness may be taking a pill right uh, they are even doing very extensive studies now with the wim hof method and uh, people with schizophrenia with post traumatic stress disorder and they're finding uh, you know positive results okay so before you try anything else try this and if it could change a life of someone like me who was uh, lazy who was overweight who had a lot of mental health issues there's no reason that it cannot change the life of every single person on the planet and it costs nothing to do that's Absolutely. the best part you don't have to buy any product you just yeah. have to learn it the free videos on uh, youtube yeah. you can download his app and um, and he he is my guru without even knowing that i exist i, I don't think uh, he knows that i exist because uh, uh, he's but have you reached out to him i've reached out to him uh, yeah. tried to reach out several times i he's just on this mission to you know propagate this and he keeps moving from city to city country to country breaking different records to try and get attention he's he's, he's got all these records on so that people got to know about him and now he doesn't even need to do that because enough people are talking about him right. i've written a whole book which i would say is uh, it's thanks to him yeah thank you in fact my takeaway is the cold shower mm -hmm. i mean i st not starting with it but moving to it and it really has i mean because after a hot shower you do feel drowsy and mm. sleepy and i will slowly move but thank you and the breathing it's just to take some time but i know the sense of alertness that it gives yeah. you you know so can i just say something about the cold shower we were we were talking about building resilience mm. so anyone from your child to you if you get used to or if you try and take a cold shower especially in the morning you are doing something difficult you're doing something which your body doesn't like you're doing something very difficult 
it is building, helping you to build that resilience. You're sending a message to your body and mind in the morning that this person is ready to do something difficult and they've done something difficult. It releases the right hormones. You feel super energized after taking a cold shower, any aches and pains are gone. And what that does is as I'm using the word resilience again and again, because that's what I would like is we need to all build resilience, especially in the young people, especially in our youth and even young kids. I want to start my, my, my son, who's going to be, uh, you know, six or seven years old soon. Um, uh, he's, he's five right now. So I'll wait for a year till I started and slowly I've already started talking to him about it. Get your children and get yourself to do difficult things. So that life becomes easier. Otherwise life is going to throw difficult things at them because they're not going to be able to cope with it when yeah. it comes like that. Yeah. So that's yeah. the way I look at it. Absolutely. Speaking about the fact that when you're so protected, we somehow rob our kids of the hunger, the hunger to push them. Right. Great. Thank you. That I want to talk to you. book and learn more about what he has to say but uh, yeah uh, in the beginning you were talking about or uh, another one is that people who's having this mental illness uh, what is the advice you want to give the people on them because I have experienced that people around them uh, take it very negative, negative so and tell them that, yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, so I'll, you. I'll answer that is people waiting for happiness to come to them. I think, as I said, you, happiness is a decision. So uh, it's, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for a million dollars to, to come to me and sell a million copies of my book. It's not just going to happen. Even if I uh, affirm it, which I've been trying. So we're, we're, we're slowly progressing there, but you have to decide to be happy and fine. Let's talk. Let's think. I mean, and what is happiness? Then, if, you, if you're waiting for happiness to come to you, then it's seeming a little material to me. Happiness is that Ferrari, which is going to be driving up to me and then I'll be happy versus you going to it or you manifesting it in your mind. You need to manifest it and be happy with it. Now your, your second question is people with mental health issues. Uh, my advice is that it's still taboo, unfortunately in our country, it's still, um, but I also see a huge amount of conversation around it. Yeah. A lot of work is, is happening around it. I have no professional training or background in mental health or counseling, but, um, I am also fortunate that enough people are coming to me and I'm able to speak to them about it and open their mind and obviously refer them to the right counselor, the right psychologist. And I also want to one quick point I'll say is that before you go to a psychiatrist whose job is only to prescribe medication to you for your mental health illness, try talk therapy, try counseling. There are 1 million other things you can try, uh, which I've mentioned in the book, which you can, you know, find like a, like a breathing exercise, like taking, going out in the sunshine every day in the morning, like taking a supplement, like Omega three or saffron, yeah. right? Kesar, you have Kesar threads morning, evening. Kesar is being used by the way, as an antidepressant, even in the West now. So, uh, this is again, th this, this, this space is amazing in terms of what it has to offer to somebody who is suffering before you get to the level on which you can always go in the end and take a pill to solve your problem. And that's not going to solve a problem, but at least try the 1 million other things before you take a pill. So Yamir, uh, what he was also wanting to know was about the caregivers. Because if one person is ill, like in any addiction, the people around you are also equally unwell. Yeah. So that you want to know that, right? Yes. So for the, for, uh, I think for that, there is enough. That's, as I said, this awareness is important. So you need to also, we need to normalize that. Okay. I'm going to give this away, but I'm, Go ahead. my, my, my uh, working title of my next book is it's okay to not be okay. 
so that's it's it's uh, it's a popular phrase now there are tv shows okay, okay. it's okay to not yeah. it's okay to not be okay so it needs to be okay to not be okay because most of us are not okay nobody is perfect all the time so we need to educate them normalize that uh, if they want to take examples of the biggest celebrities in the world are all depressed and anxious i don't know if that helps but to know that it's 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 okay it's okay if your loved one is not okay give them a chance help them heal rather than make it more difficult for them you should not become a a barrier for them to get better because you're close to this idea that you know mera beta pagal hai yeah. right that's the mentality yeah yeah also what you mentioned about happiness just yeah sure give them the mic um yamir spoke about the affirmation saying that let it not just be i want a ferrari his own affirmations are i'm healthy i'm strong i'm happy so these are intangibles but they actually are the things that matter your health absolutely and when you're talking about health it's physical mental spiritual emotional all of that sorry yes someone has a question yeah so um yamir having uh, read your book i i think uh, the awareness on mental well being on mental health that's really crucial and uh, it's much needed and i think we agree on that commonly uh, through our conversations but uh, do you have any ideas on how can we approach mental health issues or mental well being ideas for the populace you know because we as a country have a lot of other problems also sure or a lot of other issues to work on and mental health mental well being lands up being like this really like uh think for the privileged maybe whereas everyone is riddled with these problems so any ideas on how one can approach it at a more um, a more uh, bigger level so i think i have a very good answer for this thank you for asking that question and i had thought about this i feel it's actually not that difficult this particular thing we need to mental health needs to be a subject in school every school kendriya vidyalay gaon mein every everywhere and what i mean by that is that only when just the way your your parents or my parents because i never studied were on my case that you have to pass this this passing was a very big deal in my house pass ho jana please right so just that way there should be one subject on mental health what will that do is not only will it educate the child about mental health and obviously it has to be built up as a subject you you can't start teaching um psychosomatic disorders to a, a you know somebody who's just started school but it can be built up very gradually there are lots of ways to do it the best thing that it does if it's a subject the parents are forced to look into it too because the parents of are at least yeah. they impacted and if you don't pass this just the way if you don't pass maths or hindi or english or sanskrit or whatever it is that you're studying it needs to be a cbsc board type subject if it's not cleared i'm sorry your child cannot progress to the next stage and this can be implemented should be implemented even in the in the, in the villages so i think that's a huge change can that can be brought about just by doing that and it's i don't think it's that difficult to do and those very kids themselves tomorrow because they've studied this just the way they can do maths and hindi and calculation and arithmetic whatever can also choose to be in mental health professions because they've studied it from childhood or even if they don't choose to practice that they can choose to they'll be more sensitive empathetic and understanding when somebody around them has this issue and they'll know how to solve it they'll know how to deal with it immediately rather than just worrying and trying it shoving it under the brushing it under the carpet and and uh, yeah. just looking around for solutions i think that's a great idea it's like as sports are important for your physical thing this really is about normalizing you know mental health and not looking at it as a weakness mm-hmm. you know kuch problem hai yeah okay sorry last question that one more Hi. question right yeah uh sir the reason for asking you this question is because you are a young writer and i am myself a writer engineer turned writer so today's young generation has this perception that words are encyclopedias of ignorance and that words are encyclopedias encyclopedias of ignorance, ignorance. so uh, i totally disagree with so do you agree with this because they think that uh, words freeze the moment uh, freeze our perception in the uh, uh, past moment and we you know they freeze 
the perception and uh, we cannot do better other than we kept on thinking about it so young generation i didn't understand the question so let me let me rephrase it just a second can you make it short also yeah sure you're running out of so time words are encyclopedias of ignorance because they freeze perception at one moment in history oh. and then insist we continue to use those frozen perceptions when we should be doing a lot better so young generation Please has in that moment sir. yeah okay so see uh, if i've written i've written words like i am happy so that does not mean that it's it's frozen in that moment because especially when it when you're reading any book right or you're reading any text it's when you read it even if you're not reading it aloud it's appearing as a thought in your mind which is a voice in your head just the moment you read it you've made it present haven't you made it present the moment you read something absolutely yeah so i i think this is a Uh, perhaps also one of those uh, social media quotes which people are trying to sound very cool when they're saying or or they don't really i'm i'm sure because i i don't think i don't i don't think i've still understood your question but <laughs> it's it's uh, it's yes. uh, um uh, the moment you've That's read something true. you've made it present short. the moment you've thought something you've made it present short question yeah there's one a more. short okay. question okay. one last question you're yes, running out of time um i've seen you grow up from a uh, awkward teenager to a very confident and really um, i'd say good personality and uh, but you've only talked about youth what advice could you we are all aging so what advice would you give people who are going into middle age and people who are going into old age on how to change their perception of life and maybe the affirmations they should have cold shaz ma'am 100% 100% 100% cold shaz are great for your skin 100 no by the way she's taking ice shaz and i put her onto the whim of method much before that. so okay quickly to answer your question i don't believe in age as a as a number neither should you your father had six wives and uh, 18 children uh, and so he didn't believe in that clearly either so my grandfather didn't believe in age so it's it's in your head and Uh, this is an, an anti aging is never never ending there is maybe some of that in my book uh the best thing you can do for longevity at any age is uh, fasting so eat less and that's in every there's a reason it's in every major religion around the world there is a fasting practice so eat less uh basically fasting and there's a lot of supplementation that now you can do with antioxidants and th this space is th this is a whole other book so we'll we'll have to, i'll have to write one more one more book for this but if one tip is eat less do a lot of fasting and there are three lines that he has spoken that have stayed with me where he says choose to be big choose to be magnificent choose to be you and that applies at all ages and thank, thank you, you. thank you guys, so much guys yamir adhar voices in my head go and get the book thank you thank you yamir this was indeed a wonderful conversation we'd like to thank yamir adar and punita roy Ladies and gentlemen please note that Yamir will be signing the book at the book signing desk Once again Yamir is going to sign the book at the book signing desk